Hi! Welcome back to my channel. Continuing from the previous video on LoRa communication, in this video, I will show you how to create Modbus TCP with data from LoRa using an ESP8266 and a LoRa module from eBite. Before we begin, please press the subscribe button. Thank you! In this concept, for LoRa number 1, I am using a LoRa module from eBite controlled by an ESP8266. It is connected to four buttons that will control the coil registers on Modbus TCP. Just like LoRa number 1, LoRa number 2 also has four buttons that will control the coil registers on Modbus. Both of these LoRa modules will send data based on the button conditions to the LoRa gateway. At the LoRa gateway, I am still using an ESP8266 as the controller, connected to an Ethernet module for communication via Ethernet cable. This LoRa module will receive messages from both LoRa devices, which will send structured messages containing the LoRa ID and the status of each button. This LoRa gateway also acts as a Modbus TCP server. Therefore, the status of each button from the LoRa devices will be used to control the coil registers. These are the coil register addresses used. There are 8 coil registers whose statuses depend on the button statuses of each LoRa device. Coils number 0 until coil number 3 correspond to the button statuses of LoRa number 1. And coils number 4 until coil number 7 correspond to the button statuses of LoRa number 2. This Modbus is connected to node red using Ethernet communication. The coil statuses on the Modbus are then visualized in real time using the node red dashboard with LED indicators. Here are the components I used in this experiment. First, I used three units of the LoRa E32 module from eBite, two units for sending messages and one unit for receiving messages. Additionally, I used an ESP8266 as the controller. I used an Ethernet W5500 module to connect the ESP8266 to the network via Ethernet. To simplify the wiring between the LoRa module and the ESP8266 and to ensure the connections are secure, I used a PCB to connect everything properly. And these are the buttons I used. The four buttons are connected to the ESP8266. The LoRa module will send messages based on the button conditions. Other components include the power supply 5 volts, Ethernet cable, and some jumper wires. Here's the setup after connecting all components. The power supply powers up all the ESP modules. The first and second ESPs are connected to the four buttons provided. These two ESPs will send the status of each button through LoRa communication with a structured message. And this is the LoRa gateway that will receive messages from the two previous ESPs. As a Modbus TCP server, it will store the received data into coil registers. This ESP is also connected to the network via Ethernet, which facilitates communication with the TCP client. To display the values of the coil registers in the Modbus server, I use Node Red. For communication with Modbus, I use the Modbus node. Please install the Modbus node first in the Manage Palette section. To visualize the coil statuses, I use the LED node, node red contrib UI LED. After installing all the necessary nodes in the manage palette section, including the node red dashboard, the next step is to import the JSON flow I have provided. All the files I used are available for download in the video description link. In the Modbus read node, there are a few configurations to set up. First, set the function to read coils starting from address 0, and set the number of coils to read to 8 addresses. Next, in the server section, select the IP address that corresponds to the IP address of the LoRa gateway. The next node is to take the value of each coil address and send its value, true or false, to the LED node to display the status of each coil register.
For the ESP code, I have two files, one for sending and one for receiving. Let's look at the send code first. This send code is used to transmit the button status to the receiver or gateway using LoRa communication. First, we must configure the LoRa address and channel. Addresses 1 and 2 are for the LoRa module sending messages. Next, these are the pins used to connect the buttons. Don't forget to change the LoRa ID, for example, LoRa1 for LoRa number 1. Similarly, for the second sending LoRa, in this code, each button press will send a message to the receiving LoRa with a structured message containing the LoRa ID and the status of all buttons from button 1 to button 2. Next, let's look at the code for receiving LoRa messages. This code is uploaded to the ESP that will receive LoRa messages, which we call the LoRa gateway. Each time it receives a structured message from the sending LoRa modules, either LoRa 1 or LoRa 2, it writes the button status data into the coil registers. So, this ESP also functions as a Modbus TCP server, and the values of the coil registers can be accessed over the network. To see how to send and receive structured messages using Fixed Transmission LoRa, you can watch my previous video that covers LoRa communication with Fixed Transmission and Structured Messages, along with other related videos. Now, let's test it. For the Node Red dashboard, I access it using a smartphone. There are 8 LEDs to display the status of each coil register on the Modbus server. When a button is pressed, the corresponding coil register on the dashboard will light up according to the button status and coil register correspondence. In conclusion, this video demonstrated how to set up a LoRa-based system for monitoring and controlling button statuses through a Modbus TCP server. We use LoRa modules to send button status information to a LoRa gateway, which then updates coil registers in a Modbus server. The Node Red dashboard visualizes these statuses in real-time using LED indicators. By following the steps and configurations provided, you can successfully implement and test a similar setup for your own applications. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the links in the video description for more details and related content. See you in the next video.